mixing with mic mixing tip, setting pan positions in a mix. Uh, one of the things that is, um, I think, probably the most important thing in terms of sizing up and setting up a mix is uh, setting the pan positions and, and getting things laid out or oriented in such a way that um, you're creating some kind of feeling or groove or vibe and helping the song to develop. So panning can be is something that you really overlook and it can create all kinds of problems when working with a mix. And especially when you have a lot of instrumentation, the placement of the individual instrumentation uh, is really critical to the actual success of the song. So part of it is looking at your overall arrangement. So if I were to, I'm just going to take this and kind of um, kind of shrink this down a little bit. I've got my tracks organized um, here where we got bass and uh, drums kind of up here at the top. Um, uh, all through this section, percussion in here. We got keyboards, uh, guitars and keyboards running throughout this section here. The vocals are all in red um, and some saxophones that are going on here. And what I want to do is I want to kind of work with these um, uh, general settings here and kind of show you how I would approach uh, setting up a mix. So I'm going to start here by breaking everything down to just the drums and kind of getting some basics um, with this going. So this includes all of my percussion instruments. I'm going to kind of start by... Uh, taking all these guys and just sort of muting them uh, to begin with. Um, and, and then we'll just kind of start with some basic... So I got one main loop here. I'm going to come back with the bass here for a second. So this is just dry, and I got a... So this is uh, the basic uh, drum kit. So all of this stuff is basically mono. So things, what are things that go mono? Things that go mono are, are generally the more important things in a mix. Um, it's very common that you know uh, kick drum, bass, snare drum, vocal is always in the middle um, pan center, and then other instrumentation you can sort of spread out accordingly. And um, the primary reason for doing it in that way, uh, one. Um, any low end instrument you want to keep sort of centralized. Um, this is sort of a, um, it's something that has extended over from working with vinyl and mixing for vinyl releases. Um, and it's a principle that sort of stayed true uh, past, even though it's not technically really necessary. It also um, is more balancing. Like low end and sub frequencies doesn't really particularly image well, but when you shift it off to one side, particularly in headphones, it sounds very, very strange. Um, and so this is one of the first things that we're going to kind of work with here. So there's some live drums. Now, when I work with the hi-hat here, when I listen to this, I want to kind of, kind of judge as best I can the general position of the hi-hat and match it up. So if I have toms or anything like that, I'll do the same type of thing. So when I mix in... I want it to kind of sit in the same pan location. So if I have toms, I would listen to the way it appears in the overheads and generally try to match it up, unless it's doing something bizarre. So sometimes in a mix, I may want to make the uh, drums a little bit narrower in terms of working with them. So I may want to mono this up a little bit, especially if I have a lot of instrumentation. And this can help to focus the sound of the drum kit. Now, if I go this way, I'm also going to have to move any toms or other panning in with the in along with it. You can shift that otherwise, but generally that's kind of like a good practice. So here we have like now let's let's kind of go back here. This is where we would start um, working with individual instruments that are also part like so we have a bunch of percussion elements one of the things we have here is like some toms okay so this is something that is uh generally let's see if i can zoom out on some of these tracks this is stereo so i'm just going to kind of leave this right here and kind of work with that 
Now there's also uh, a little Simmons fill here. Now see where, where this kind of fits in, because this is not panned. Okay, because this has got delays and all kinds of things on it. It's actually going to have like its own little place. Um, this guy, maybe. So we have to kind of listen to this. Right now, this for this for right now, I'm probably just going to leave this center, um, but probably automate the panning of that as it kind of goes along. Um, I have two cowbells now that are. So in this, what I've done is I'm kind of panning these guys at least temporarily kind of opposite of each other because they kind of work off of each other. And it kind of helps the development. So some of the things like I'm um, thinking from beginning to end, I may be thinking more monoish in terms of my panning for other instrumentation in earlier parts of the song or verses and going wider in choruses. So I kind of want to make those considerations as well when I'm kind of working with stuff and see what, what we have going on here. So, okay, so this can... This is kind of one that, like, it could be kind of anywhere. And because it's just in that one location, um, believe it or not, I'm more likely to kind of keep this center because it's not really doing that anything special. And I have a ton of other instruments that are kind of coming in here. So we'll just kind of see, keep this a little bit more uh, tight. Let's kind of go here. There's like a... So here's something that I might want to work off a little bit to the side. Oh, actually, let me put it in the bass because this is kind of just that kind of anchor. And there's also another part that's right here. So let's kind of see. So that's just the stereo effect. And then I have another guy right here. All right, so that's just kind of stereo. I'm going to kind of leave that as it is. So let's just see where all of this kind of fits in together. Okay, so this can actually, uh, this can actually, because it also only plays um, this part right here, right in the beginning, and then we have some of these sound effects. I think I'm just going to kind of leave that again in the center earlier on in the song, and then let things kind of play out a little bit more. And then we also have something. Ah, uh, okay, so now this is something here that just sort of adds on to that same. So because that kind of leads in like a little bit prior, see one kind of comes right in at the same time, the other, that one comes a little earlier. So here, I think what I would do is I would kind of pan this off a little bit to the side and just kind of see what, just to kind of create a little bit of movement in that section and we'll see. If it's just like an emphasis thing it, and there's too much else going on, then I'll just kind of keep it simple and kind of mono it up. Now there's another, um, there's a keyboard part here in the beginning, and I'll give you an idea of like what I would do here. All right, so uh, let's see what this is. So this is of course all dry, completely unaffected. Okay, so now this ch this changes the formula a little bit because now what I have is I have a, um, let me just see if I can highlight the two tracks that are kind of um, playing off of each other. We got this guy, and then we got this guy right here. 
And uh, so what I'm doing here, I may want to... Because these parts are essentially uh, doubling each other. Let's kind of move them. I'm going to move this guy uh, right next to this guy. So let's see what happens if I sort of spread them out. And then this guy kind of fills in for those, those little lines here and there. Okay, so now this creates a little bit of uh, room for me to kind of play around. So it, it sort of spreads out a little bit. All right, and now we have like uh, some other parts that kind of come in here as well, these two guys. So now, but these guys come in later. So maybe what I can do is move these guys farther out. And uh, this comes later on. Okay, so it's delays like on one. So this may not work kind of the way I have it scripted here, but. Uh, maybe there's like a, an inverse because this. And I think you get the, the basic idea of, of what's going on. There's other parts that are, you know, there's kind of just tons of tracks on this, so this can kind of go on forever. But the idea is that I'm really thinking as I'm going through each part. So that's kind of stereo. I can mono up stereo tracks if necessary, but... Okay, so now these guys are kind of tied together. And probably will want to keep them tied together. So this is where I want kind of a little bit more, more of the spread. And uh, so this is kind of coming into now when we get into like the, the sections as they start to expand out, you start to get more tracks kind of. Um... This I would probably, that um, voice effect, I would probably put on some kind of uh, stereo thing to kind of you know, do a stereo spread on it or something, just to kind of... And now we have a guitar. That's actually a mono guitar. Uh, or it's it's so tight that, you know, I could kind of put it anywhere. That should also be stereo. It sounds like a... Uh, or mono. So if I kind of do this here, I can kind of...
So the idea here is that in the end, you're going to want to create a kind of a little bit of a building kind of architecture, right? So we got some stereo kind of things. Kind of keeping it a little bit, a little bit tight in the beginning and kind of letting it widen as it kind of goes along. This way we have like some kind of fill out of size. So this sort of takes over where this leaves off and there's like some vocal stuff here, so. Oh, this is this, uh, that Koto, that needs like a reverb or delay. This Koto thing, I think I'm gonna to need to move over because it, it interferes with one of the guitar parts in this section. And probably invert these two guys because this guy doesn't come back in. And that won't make a difference in the beginning. Oh, except now it interferes with that guy, so. This may be kind of like a more of a central thing. That's kind of that requires a little bit of a thing, but you could see how what I'm trying to do here is trying to to avoid uh, conflicts in terms of the panning, which means that uh, I can start to uh, taking on take on some different positions. Like maybe these guitars always come from the same place, and then they never interfere. So maybe they're always from this side, and then um, and then this can kind of be on its own and when they come to that section where they're both playing at the same time then they kind of balance each other out in the mix and you want to feel like some sense of like groove so as different elements are are coming into the mix they they have like a natural place within the architecture of the mix. Go back to that chorus section and uh, where is it? Spread those guys out so that when it comes into to that section of the song, you kind of have uh, that width kind of coming in, and this is part of how you set up, you know, where what you're gonna processing. So now that's so much more impactful, just kind of bringing that in, just like that. And there's some other annoying pokey keyboard that doesn't quite fit in. So the idea is that you're working in the development and interrelationship of the instruments and how they basically weave in and out of each other. That's a huge, huge part of setting uh, up the panning and getting it. So hopefully this gives you a good idea of how to approach um, setting your pan positions. Uh, and uh, that is our uh, mixing with Mike uh, mixing tip of the week, setting pan positions.